what's happening fish and friends welcome to another episode set up over here at my desk if you oh. are you jealous that i'm down here with the camera on what's your deal if you ever watch my lives i do the lives over there so if you see behind me there's a desk well i set up this desk uh, to be able to do hands in front of the camera reviews and stuff again i didn't have a spot to do this for the longest time i'm still rearranging my basement it's an absolute mess but now i've got a spot where i can sit and do all this so let me get this on the tripod and we're going to do some real talk today so i posted a while back a choice on the next video to make it was the jig versus ned rig or just some random real talk some reels that i've got sitting around some of them i've used some of them are still sitting in boxes and a lot of people said they want to get back to the real talk stuff so instead of doing a specific review on one i grabbed these we're going to kind of talk through them so enough wasting time let's start with the shimano slx mgl 70. now this was one the first time i used it i was like yeah yeah it's pretty good but it's one of those that has honestly become one of my top like do anything just pick it up throw anything on it reels now because it is the 70, it does have a smaller line capacity. So you wouldn't want to use this for, you know, like big swim baits, things where you're going to have heavier line, frogging, anything like that would not be my choice. But, you know, with some 15 pound, that's what I've got on here, some 15 pound braid, um, you know, I was using this to throw spinner baits, underspins, uh, you know, you could flip and pitch jigs on this. Really a do anything real. And I like it over the regular SLX. It does have that MGL spool, which does help with lighter baits. And I was kind of surprised because the SLX alone, I thought was pretty darn good at throwing light baits but this does a really good job and it's got those variable brakes there so you can uh, really fine tune those there with the external dial pop it open and then you've got your internal brakes that you can adjust as well so usually i just leave these two on two off and then everything else i'm doing with the external brakes the other thing i like about the slx line is it's you know kind of a no frills feels good in hand still a good low profile feel to it it's got the good knobs on it really everything you'd need in a reel without you know all the extra crazy stuff so hats off to shimano you know they're not one of those companies that say you know 27,000 bearings um you know low on the bearing count four plus one bearing system and arguably shimano has the smoothest reels on the market including these the little slx's are great at the price i have a couple of these i think they come in at one 150 i had to check my phone real quick i'll link all these reels down below to tackle warehouse of course i did partner up with them this year so if you're using my links a portion of that does come back to me if you buy anything or if you go to other places like for example these i've got a couple of these mgls um, the last one I got at American Legacy, I think for 99 bucks. So you can really get some good deals over there. This was used, quote unquote, uh, in like exceptional shape or whatever. Looked like it had barely been used by the time I got it. So check them out. Check other places. Look for deals. But if you want a good all-around reel, if you don't need a ton of line capacity, I'm loving this. Sticking with that Shimano theme, I don't remember where I got this one. I got this one online. They had a big sale somewhere. Had it for a while. I have even got it out to use it. But this is one of the original Corrado DCs. Now you all have seen me use the SLX DC. Uh, I need to do reviews on all these uh, individually, but the Corrado DC. So the thing again with Corrado's is arguably the smoothest reels on the market. I remember the first time I picked up just a regular Corrado, not the DC. Um, I was like, holy smokes, like is this, is the drag even set? It feels like this is just spinning, but it was, uh, and they're darn smooth reels. Now the thing with the DC reels to open it up, you have to turn this over here to free. This is your external uh, brake setting. If you're not familiar with the DC reels, that stands for digital cast control or digitally controlled reels. So you can see the braking system looks a little bit different than anything else you would open up. So when you cast this, this piece, this little chip in here is checking your spool speeds at like, I don't know, a thousand something times per second, whatever it is. And that's what gives this sound. Sounds like a robot or some transformer, right? So when you see people casting these reels, that's what this is. Now for a beginner, I think they can help you out. They can help you learn that learning curve. These are not uh, backlash proof 100%. I don't know what the word would be. Um, I remember my SLX DC, I backlashed so many times when I first started. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty proficient with bait casters. I've used them for a long time. What the hell is the deal? The thing for me was I usually keep my spool tension pretty loose and I noticed for the DC, the SLX DC, I had to have, had to have my spool tension a little bit tighter than I would normally go. So really when there's no side to side movement and just a little bit more and then I didn't have any more issues after that. Now, of course, if you, you know, hit something with it in mid cast, you know, a tree behind you or grass, you can still mess it up. But casting into the wind, skipping under docks, that sort of thing, a DC reel does really come in handy. But people ask me all the time, you know, should I go with a DC reel? Should I not? Should I? Usually my first question is, how proficient are you with a baitcaster? If they're like, oh, I've used baitcasters forever. I skip under docks with normal. 
I say no, because generally the DC reels are a little bit heavier. So for example, this guy, 7.8 ounces, that's pretty beefy for a reel. You know, usually I'm looking at bait casters right around that kind of six ounces mark, six to seven ounces. But if weight's not a huge concern and you feel like sometimes you struggle in the wind or, you know, just trying to, to skip or, you know, hit certain places, then a DC reel might be for you. A little bit larger uh, frame to this one. This is a 150. I noticed these do have the actual power grips, which are a little bit more contoured, like on the regular um, Corrado. I do like those for just regular cast and retrieve stuff. This one, you know, because it's kind of that smaller 70 size, they did opt with uh, a different kind of flat type handle. Still, you know, pretty grippy, but I do prefer the, uh, the handle knobs on this one more. Okay, you can't talk about Shimano without going to the, the direct head-to-head, -head, you know, two best reels on the market. Often people say, if you buy anything else other than those, you're dumb. I don't believe that because there's a lot of good reel manufacturers out there right now, but we're going to skip over to the Daiwa Steez CT SV TW700H. I mean, it rolls off your tongue the way they name this thing. Beautiful little reel. So this was a subscribed fish and friend sold me this uh, dirt cheap. He bought it somewhere. I don't know if he got it at JDM uh, and didn't like it. He said it was too small for his hands, more of a finesse thing. He said, I wanted something different. So he sold it to me for an absolute steal. I appreciate your brother. Now this one you can see is super shiny. Uh, I haven't even got this out to use it yet. It uh, comes in the little package here. That's where it's set. I know bad of me, but um, this is the first Steez I have ever owned. I know Punch Fishing talks about like the Steez A. I've never used any of the Steez um, up until this one. So I can say, Nice and smooth. It is a little bit louder than the Shimano, I think. And I don't know if that's because of the T-Wing the system there being a little bit heavier. It doesn't rub on anything or if it's the MagTrack brakes. Uh, excuse me, Mag Force brakes. MagTracks are uh, Abu. The Mag Force brakes are this uh, you know air rotor control that they called if you've never seen inside a Daiwa reel. Pop this open and they look uh, a lot different than uh, the reels you're used to. So this little guy has the G1 Duralumin spool, which is supposed to be lighter than like magnesium, aluminum, so they can use, you know, the same amount of material or even like this one, you can see it's a very small spool and make it weigh less. Now it's interesting because it has this induction rotor here. So this moves in and out. If you can see that as you cast, this piece moves into the magnets here. So when you put this inside there, that cone fits in there. So it's kind of like they're magnetic brakes, but it's also centrifugal because as you cast, that moves out. So it's an interesting brake system. And um, I think one of the best uh, things about the dial reels is the brakes. In my opinion, it's the best braking system out there. Uh, dial reels are extremely hard to backlash. I'm gonna talk about one here at a little bit better price point. I know this is, I think the, the JDM version. There's a new like CT70 something that's out now. It's like 700 bucks, crazy. I would never pay that much brand new for a reel, but there's people that are diehards that pay it uh, and like it. And you know, fishing is different for everyone. If you want to pay a little bit more and enjoy it, that's up to you. But if we stick with Daiwa and switch gears, remember how I said one of my all-time favorite reels, uh, just like all use? One of my other ones for the year has to be the Daiwa Tattoo 150. Now, the thing that I know that turns a lot of people off about dial reels is they have a longer profile and a little bit larger uh, frame kind of sideways. So if you compare this Tattoo 150 to that smaller SLX MGL 70, you can see the size difference there in frame. Also, uh, side to side, it's kind of hard for me to show it this way, but it's a wider reel as well. So if you have smaller hands or if you like that real small compact profile, um, Daiwa may not be the thing for you. I know some people also don't like the brakes out here. Uh, they haven't really given me an issue at all. I mean, I can feel them there, but it's nothing that like would rub my finger raw or anything. Um, in hand to me, this fits me very well. And you can see I've used this for uh, in through last year into this year and look at how smooth this thing is still. Now, of course, I know that spinning the handle doesn't you know, necessarily mean anything, but uh, I mean, it's just a smooth reel. It's got a good big handle on it. The grips, even though they are flat, you can see there, they are a good grippy material. I don't like um, like the little handles they went to on the Tattoola 100. They're these little scrawny handle deals. I don't know, I don't like them, but it's still got the T-Wing system in it. Uh, and the T-Wing system, after you press the thumb bar down to cast, it makes this larger system in here. So uh, the, the line guide portion, when you cast, the line has less, I guess, surface area to hit up against and bounce against. So it's supposed to give you longer casts. And when you click the reel over, it goes back up and that's where your line sits in there as it winds up back on. Um, so again, all around, I mean, I was whipping this thing into the wind, throwing spinner baits, things that eh, sometimes can be eh, uh, without any sort of issues at all. You can whip this thing. Uh, I absolutely love this reel. Maybe the only drawback is it's a little bit larger, but 
Um, one thing that you don't really find, I think this reel retails that used to be at like 150. I got this over at Sportsman's Outfitters. They had these on sale, uh, I think that was two years ago, for I believe $100. So again, look for those sales, look for different places. Uh, but the cool thing about these is if you want a good frog and reel or a jig reel, something where you're just slamming those hook sets hard, or maybe you're fish, fighting bigger fish, this has an aluminum uh, handle side plate and an aluminum frame. Something that you don't find in a lot of reels, like you look at Lou's for example, you have to get up to like the $250, $300 mark um, before you get that in a lot of them. I think that one of their HD, like the 300 size reels has that, but as far as a low, lower profile reel like this, aluminum handle side plate and aluminum frame, tolerances in it are real good, super sturdy. I mean, if you got in trouble, you could always pull this thing off and throw it at someone in self-defense. Um, that's how solid it is. Maybe a little bit heavier than some reels out there, but if you want a good all around solid heavy duty reel, I would highly recommend it. Okay, over to Lou's. I know I'm kind of going out of order here. My OCD people are probably uh, scratching their eyes out, but the Lou's BB1 Pro. So I've got one of the old BB1 Tournament Pros, and it was one of my favorite reels. Uh, it was before they did the quiet cast brakes, um, and you did have to keep the, the brake race oiled because it would start to screech. So that was one thing I know that, uh, that Lou's fixed with these when they went to these little uh, orange red brake deals. So these are centrifugal brakes. These move in and out as you cast. Those little uh, pieces rub against this brake ring here, and that's what slows your reel down. Yeah, there it is right there. The quiet cast adjustable centrifugal brake six pin system. And it is quieter. I've not had to uh, oil any of these that I've got this on. Most of their new ones have it. But the new BB1, and yes, I do use both left and right handed reels. That's something I taught myself to do uh, a while back. Just for ease of, man, a lot of times you find certain reels on sale and it's only a left handed version. So now it doesn't matter what it is I can use either. But uh, the BB1, larger line capacity, so a lot of guys like these for cranking. This does have the bigger handle, I'm guessing 95 millimeter. The knobs are a little bit larger as well, so instead of being like those flat LFS knobs, they're contoured a little bit, and they feel maybe just a little bit longer this way. They do feel pretty good in hand, um, kind of slick still. I wish these would have some sort of texture, not my favorite material. Um, I like this stuff on the die was better. See, these are dirty, like I said, that's used, but you know, definitely a more grippy uh, rubber type stuff on it. But again, lose, and this is a little bit bigger. The, uh, the BB1 frame is not one of the LFS frame type deal, the lighter, faster, stronger, those, you know, real small frames. But this is still a small frame uh, all in all, feels good in hand. Um, if you're using something where you want just a little bit more line capacity or making big long casts with top waters, cranking, and I knew these do come in some, uh, some slower gear speeds. For example, I got the six two to one. I think they make a five speed, um, which is better for cranking because you know when you've got those lures that have more resistance, uh, a lower gear ratio like that, you get more torque. So you just don't get as tired as much. You don't have to work as much at it. So haven't even got this one out yet. It was new for 2022. I like it. Uh, I don't know. Comment below and let me know what you think of the. Uh, I like that it's all blacked out, like the dark metal that you know just black a few gold accents i love boring like sleek reels like this so i like the looks of it uh, i'm kind of boring like that though now switching gears to a reel that confused me oh one thing i forgot to point out on that bb1 there was a scratch on the front of it look at this one so there's a chip of paint there there's a paint chip there and if you notice lose stop putting like any sort of uh protection on their reels now, i don't care if it comes with like this stuff you can get the guides you know online but you know, at least put a little bubble wrap in there. Is this going to, you know, mess up the performance of it? No, but it'd be like me going to a car dealership and seeing scratches on it and the guy being like, ah, oh, it's not going to mess with the performance. You're all right. So this is the Lose Tournament Line. Again, I think this was Sportsman Outfitters that had this one for like a hundred bucks off. Um, I picked this one up and it's really confusing kind of in the line of Lose reels. So the Lose Tournament Light LFS retails at 250 is an aluminum frame with C45 carbon side plates. Now it confuses me because it looks like pretty much the same reel as the Lose Custom SLP, which is $180 retail and has been one of my favorite reels to use all around this year. Now you notice the big discrepancy, the weight on that one is 6.4 ounces versus uh, the lighter, I guess, as the name implies, Tournament Light LFS. Otherwise, not gonna lie, they are pretty darn similar. So if weight's a big thing and you can feel in hand, this thing does, uh, you know, it is very, very light. And again, it is that LFS frame. So it's that real small, compact, 
you know, if you like that feel, oftentimes when I'm pitching and flipping, I do really like the loose setups or anything like that where I'm doing a bunch of work like this way. I want to finger the line, uh, you know, feel those bites, you know, flipping like a Texas rig or something. These are sweet reels. Now, again, remember, they are carbon side plates. Um, I am a huge proponent of aluminum frames. Um, when you get into the real, real thick stuff, bigger fish, heavier baits, um, I think an aluminum handle side plate, this uh, is a big deal. But for just stuff like this, as long as you don't have the drag locked completely, completely down fishing, crazy hard, heavy stuff, usually you're going to be okay now. Now these do have those centrifugal, but they're externally adjustable too. So you don't need to get into it. As you can see there, it's got your dial with the numbers. You just click that to make it how, you know, how much breaks you want and you're off to the races. Your spool tension does have the line indicator on it. As you can see there, so you can set what line you're using. This does have the carbon fiber handle. So, you know, there are some kind of cosmetic -y things you're paying extra for this one. Uh, but, you know, weight, weight is honestly one of the things you're going to pay for as you go up in price of rods, reels, generally it's gonna be a lighter product. Not always, but generally weight is something that you're gonna pay for, and I think that's kind of the case here. Um, choosing between the two, again, I haven't even got this one out yet, but that custom, the uh, the black one I showed you before, uh, has been one of my favorites. Okay, last up, I've got a couple spinning reels from Okuma. Now, the first Okuma spinning reel that I ever got was the Epixera. I think on sale from Amazon, Tackle Advisors um, left a link and said, hey, if anybody wants one, I think they're regular like 60 bucks. I got mine for, I think, $32. Awesome little reel. I used it for years until I dropped it on the concrete and it did break uh, the little handle piece here. But overall, the reel held up really well. It's got the uh, the torsion control armor on it and it doesn't feel like a cheap, you know, plasticky reel. It held up very well. I also like that Okuma does a good sturdy bail wire. I hate when it's like the little tiny one, uh, my old Shimano. What is it, Sahara, I think it is. I did bend that a little bit so it doesn't like really click or anything. Um, so that is one thing I do like about their reels. Now, both of these have it. You've seen me use the Okuma ITX. Um, this is an extra one I had. I might be doing a giveaway of this soon, so uh, keep your eyes peeled. But the Okuma ITX, again, has that torsion control. This comes in, I think, at $99, uh, if I remember correctly. Good, strong barrel wire. Uh, you know, I like the setup and every, everything on it. Dad likes the round handle too, cause like anywhere you grab it, he's got one of these. Uh, anywhere you grab it, you know, you're good to go. You don't have to fumble around. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'm kind of eh, I, I don't really love it or hate it. It's just kind of there. Uh, but overall, pretty darn good reel for 99 bucks. I've been happy with mine. Now, the confusing part for me, so Okuma's got bait casters too, up to the $99 price point. They don't have any that are aluminum frame. And I'd asked them about that. And they'd said, uh, it's just not anything we've got into yet. They've got, I think, three different uh, graphite frame and side plate bait casters from I think $69 up to $90. You know, it's hard for me not to use like an LFS at 99 bucks, uh, you know, and get that aluminum frame. But this guy, so this dude was very, very interesting. Uh, Okuma sent one of these over to me. And I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed. Like the feel of it, the smoothness, this thing is super smooth in hand. And they call it, what do they call it? Now they call it their frictionless main shaft design. I saw pictures of it before, I don't remember where that was, but it's kind of got like a, a main shaft that's like whittled out a little bit, so it's not always rubbing on the pinion and such in there. And you can definitely feel it. I mean, out of the package, feels very good and it's quiet. It's got just a little bit of sound to it, but I mean, at I think this is an $89 reel. I was pretty impressed with it. Again, uh, you know, it's got that sturdy bail wire. I noticed this did not have the torsion control, so we'll see how this feels once you actually get some pressure on it. You know, some of the you know the the cheaper graphite reels, man, you can really feel that flex, and that's what people ask me: Why are you so big on an aluminum frame and a bait caster? Like, listen, I don't catch monster fish, but even like a two three pounder, as you're fighting them in, uh, I mean, you can feel that flex. Like I said, I've roasted all graphite framed reels just from that. So. Bumping up to that, um, I don't think it's as big of a deal on spinning reels because I've always got my drag set uh, a little lower. So when I pull into that fish, you know, you might have a little bit of drag slip, you can tighten it, but if that fish really pulls, it's pulling off drag. With my bait casters, I tend to have them set up harder because I'm fishing them around heavier stuff, heavier line. You know, if I flip a Texas rig into some wood, I want to hit that fish hard and be able to turn it out. I don't want it to take a bunch of drag and pull me down into that brush and stuff where I'm screwed, especially if you're on the bank. You know, you can't just troll out to it like on the boat. So um, with these, though, I'm usually not fishing super heavy stuff. I'm generally a, a braid to fluorocarbon liter or mono liter, depending on what you're doing. So like 10 to 15 pound braid max on these with like eight to 
maybe 12 pound fluorocarbon, usually eight or 10 is my go-to. So, you know, if you've already got a pretty solid $99 reel, you come out with this one at 89 bucks, like why is any, anybody gonna buy this one? I don't know. Maybe like there's the whole salt and freshwater thing. I know Okuma's big in the salt stuff. Uh, I don't fish there, but I'm guessing this will probably replace uh, the ITX because man, this thing feels really good. Again, I don't know, I'd have to look at all the specs and stuff, this might not be uh, salt water rated. I'm sorry, it's not something I look for, but feels good, need to get it out and use it. But I want you all to do me a favor, comment below and let me know which one of these you'd like to see a review on, a full breakdown, you know, we can take it apart, do whatever, or, if there's another reel that I've got that you're just absolutely dying to see you on, comment below and let me know. Listen, I hope you all enjoy the Real Talk stuff. We're definitely going to be doing more of this soon. Winter is coming here in Iowa much sooner than I would like, but yeah, I got to deal with it here. So I'll definitely be doing some more gear reviews. Honestly, gear reviews, breakdowns, nerding out over this stuff uh, are probably my favorite videos. I love talking about gear, testing out reels and stuff, uh, and I just haven't done a ton of it lately. So please do me a huge favor and comment below. Let me know which reel you would really, really, really like to see me go in depth on. If it's one that I don't have, I'll try to get my hands one out. I've been trying not to spend as much. Um, I know times are tough. Uh, a lot of people have had to tighten up their wallets. I've got some extra stuff around here, so I'll probably be doing a giveaway soon. So keep your eyes peeled for something like that. Now today's subscribe fish and friend, gotta give a shout out to Stacy. Stacy goes outside, check out her YouTube channel. She just went fishing with old Rolla Martin. She's an OG, has followed me for a long time. I appreciate the folks who continue to support, follow me, you know, watch on the live streams, watch the videos. I don't need, you know, you don't need to send money. A lot of people are always saying like, oh, I wish I could send you something. Listen, I don't need all that. I want you to watch, comment, subscribe, share the videos. All that's free and it helps me out a ton because I would not be here without all of you. So uh, that's enough for me. I gotta get to editing. Thanks for watching and until next time.